is in Russia's DNA, according to the former director of U.S. national intelligence, James Clapper. And that proves Moscow is still making attempts to influence American politics. He was appearing in a new documentary aired by the CNN news channel during primetime in America. Is there any reason to believe that Russia is not right now, today, continuing to attempt to or to infiltrate U.S. political organizations, individuals? Oh, I'm, I'm quite sure they are. I think it's in their DNA, whether during the Soviet era or now. RT's Nikki Aaron joined Kevin Owen in the studio earlier to explain whether there was an actual smoking gun this time around. There was so much anticipation over this latest special report from CNN. It was billed as the first comprehensive telling of, on television of Russia's attack on the 2016 presidential race and also with jarring lessons for the American leaders and the public about more attacks still to come. Now, who wouldn't want to watch this? It seems like uh, CNN was going to lift the lid on all of these unverified sources and unsubstantiated claims it's used in the past to mm. Russia bash with its stories almost on a daily basis. But I'm afraid there's going to be a lot of disappointed viewers after this report because it's all the same old tune. It's just repackaged in a new way. A lot of ominous music, a lot of close-up shots on President Putin looking moody and mean. Well, take a look for yourself. At home, some of his opponents end up dead. Abroad, his prime target is the U.S. A spy story in cyberspace that would lead right to Putin's doorstep. That's all very familiar, isn't it? We saw a very similar uh, documentary released uh, by CNN before called uh, Putin, the most powerful man in the world. Although there are plenty of nicely edited sound bites in this latest uh, special report, although I have to say probably an overindulgence on these shots of uh, soldiers marching through Moscow almost conjures up uh, ideas of North Korea. But we both live in Moscow. We know this is not no. something that we see on a daily basis at all. And I'm afraid the closest we come to seeing any solid evidence that Russia was behind the attacks is this. What kind of evidence? Some of it's surprisingly simple, such as timestamps showing that the hackers were starting and finishing their work days on Moscow time. We live in hope that uh, viewers watching this will realize that Moscow shares a time zone with many other cities around the world. And also, do hackers work nine to five jobs? Who knows? Just one day before the airing of this special report, uh, three CNN staff members resigned over an unsubstantiated Russia-related story, which CNN pulled just a few days earlier. And the day just snowballed, really. It went from bad to worse. After that, a producer for CNN was caught saying that the network's Russia coverage was more about ratings than being based on any solid facts. With more details on that uh, latest Project Veritas leak, here's Caleb Morpin. Well, a video has surfaced of a CNN producer saying that most of their Russia Trump coverage is, well, in more polite terms, nonsense. The more CNN constantly, like, Russia this, Russia that. Because it's ratings. Because it's ratings? Our ratings are incredible right now. But honestly, you'd, you'd think the whole Russia is just like Could it. I mean, we, it's mostly it right now. Like, we don't have any big giant and it's not just one guy from CNN who's saying that there's not much to this story of Trump-Russia collusion. There's no evidence Allison. that there's collusion. But they didn't find any evidence of collusion. We have no evidence of collusion. Or there is no evidence of collusion between the Russians and the Trump campaign. But at this point, what's not proven is the idea of collusion. That's correct. Still no evidence, but the media keeps pushing the story. Project Veritas, that leaked the recent video, says that CNN has mentioned Trump and Russia roughly 16,000 times. You would think people might get bored with the subject by now. Are you tired of hearing about Trump and Russia? Uh, yes, actually, I am. Yes, that's all I hear about, probably. <laughs> it's just getting a little tiring. We're all exhausted. Yeah. However, however, uh, it has to be, it has to, the, the truth has to come out. And the truth is that, that there was interference in the American electorate system by, by Putin and his henchmen. You feel like this is what the American people want to see on TV, is they want to hear about Trump allegedly working with Russia? Not me. Not any of my friends. I think they would. Okay. That's something, um, you know, if, if, if there is something secret about something, people want to know even more. So if you just bring it out in the open, if there is something, it'll come out. If it's not, then it's just go away. And you feel like the media should be reporting on this more or less? Um, less. I'd like to hear where these sources are coming from or who's saying it. As far as I know, it could be my next door neighbor. 
If they don't have proof, they need to drop it. Now, the CNN producer allegedly said that they keep pushing the story because of ratings. However, a lot of the Americans we spoke to said they'd rather watch something else. Caleb Moppin, RT, Washington, D.C. Okay, back to the CNN video released by Project Veritas. The network issued a statement saying they stand by their producer and welcome diversity of opinion. A White House spokesperson was asked about it at a news conference and said it could further undermine trust in the media. I think if it is accurate, I think it's a disgrace to all of media, to all of journalism. I think that we have gone to a place where uh, if the media can't be trusted to report the news, then that's a dangerous place for America. Yeah, as mentioned, the group which released the video is called Project Veritas, and its work is proving highly controversial, particularly in the past. It's been accused of violating wiretapping laws. It's facing a million-dollar lawsuit after it released hidden camera conversations with Democratic Party workers discussing voter fraud. Well, the group has also been accused of misleading the public with flawed editing of its videos. Project Veritas dismisses the lawsuit as intimidation. Well, we challenge the group's communications director on their controversial tactics. We weren't specifically looking for this angle, but we, I mean, this is a general area we were going. We didn't know exactly what we would catch. We caught it. The only way to get to the truth sometimes is with undercover video, which has a very rich and long and proud tradition, undercover investigations of obtaining the truth when other mechanisms fail. People are not going to sit up there and brag on the podium that, that, that we're, we're corrupt. I'm not expecting a backlash from this particular video because we followed the law. We followed both the letter and the intent of the law with how we obtained the video. Obviously, we're not going to tell you what's coming up or who the exact targets are, but we have many targets in the mainstream media that we're actively working on, and we'll have more on CNN coming sometime very soon.